Welcome to this course on Spring MVC. We are in step 32 and we would want to install Spring Security. So in this particular video, we would look at step 32 and step 33. What you do is we would set up Spring Security for the already existing application and we would add a logout functionality also using Spring Security. And you'd find all the code stepwise in this particular git repository which is in 28 minutes spring mvc step by step you should find a link to it in the description of the video and we are in step 32 so if you would want to download the code at the end of this step all that you need to do is click the zip file step 32 backup a new page would come up where you can click the raw button and then you should have downloaded the whole thing up so here i need to click the raw button it would download a zip to your local you can import that zip and use our installation guide Java, Eclipse and Maven in that zip file. It's explained of how you can use the zip file and run a web application. So you'll learn how to run the code in that particular zip file using Tomcat. The installation guide should help you to do that. If you have already installed Java, Eclipse and Maven, probably the last steps of the installation guide would be important things for you where you can go through and run the application in Tomcat. Once you have that, then you can follow this course step by step, following step 33, where we would be configuring Spring Security, and step 33, where we would be adding the logout functionality. Welcome, let's get started now. Welcome to this step 32 of our Spring MVC course. In this step, we would get set up for Spring Security. So there are a lot of useful snippets that you would need to set up the Spring Security stuff. The first one that you see in here are the dependencies. So we need two jar files, Spring Security Web and Spring Security Config. We would use the 4.0.1 release version of Spring Security. So we will add these to our Maven file. This entire Java file you are looking at is called the Security Configuration. This is where we define a couple of things. One is who are the valid users to access the application and what are their roles. So that's defined in the configure global security. And the second thing that you would see in here is the configure method where we are configuring what are the URLs which are accessed by everything and what are the URLs which have to be secured. So if anybody types in slash to do something, then we don't want to allow them in. We would want them to go to the login page, login, and then come back to the URL. That's what we would define in here. So the first thing which we looked at were the jars. So we would add in the jars. Next thing which we would add in is the security configuration class, which is basically the configuration for Spring Security. The third thing we would need to do is to execute Spring Security before every controller request, every so what we would do is we would try and intercept every request. The best concept in Java EE for intercepting every request is by using a filter. So what we would do is we will define a filter in the web.xml and use it to do the Spring Security stuff. So those are the three things. Add the jar, add the filter, and add the configuration. That's quite simple. Those are the three things that we would want to achieve in this particular step. So let's go ahead and quickly add in the jars. Let's go to the pom.xml and add this in. I would uh, go in here. I think Spring Security, I'll just put it before Spring MVC or after Spring MVC. So that's good. So now we have the thing added in the pom. So you would slowly see the Maven dependencies also coming in Spring Security core, Spring Security config. That's good. So we have these things added in. So this is where we would learn an important feature in Eclipse. So what I would do is I'll copy the entire class. So I'm selecting the entire thing, Command C. So Control C, I'm copying this in. What I would do is I would go in to the Java, source main Java and right click, paste. Do you see the magic happening? So Eclipse would create the class for you. So if you copy any class from anywhere, that's the easiest way to create the class. So we kind of used a shortcut. So we pulled in the data from uh, our Git repository. So what this security configuration defines is basically two things. Who are the valid users? The valid users are in 28 minutes and his password is dummy. And he has roles, user and admin. 
So what I'm saying is in 28 minutes dummy if anybody logs in with this ID give him the user ID uh, I mean give him the role user and also the admin role and if you want to add more users you can do that in here as well you can keep adding more with user and passwords in here that should not be a problem and the second thing that we did is we have configured which URLs are secure and we are saying anything which contains to do has to be secured and it should be allowed only for users who have a role user so in 28 minutes has a role user so he'll be allowed and the slash login is the page where spring security would expose a login page of its own so the spring security already has a login page of its own which would be exposed at the slash login url so that login url alone we would permit everybody to log in and for rest everything you would at least need to have a user role if you don't have a user role then you would be asked to log in so that's basically what the configuration is saying it's quite a simple configuration there's not a lot of things in here as such the last one is we would want to add in a filter so let's go ahead and quickly configure this filter in where do we configure the filter web.xml let's go ahead and do that so let's add a filter at the end of the so this filter is a uh, delegating filter proxy we want this to handle all the requests which are coming into the dispatcher servlet so we are saying slash star anything that comes in take it to the secure spring security filter chain and only then let it be handled by the dispatcher servlet that's it with those three mini steps we are ready and let's see what is happening so let's type in now localhost slash 8080 nothing is happening because i have to restart the server i made a change in the web.xml so let's restart the server so now i'm typing in localhost 8080 and now you're automatically redirected to a login page actually this is not a login page that we have created this is the default page which comes in with spring security and now we type in the user id and password that we have configured so in 28 minutes and dummy and login and now you can see that i'm able to go to the home page and to do page as well what you can try doing is actually try closing the browser completely close the browser and try to enter the url this to do's you would see that that url is blocked from now on you will not be able to go to any of the urls with without logging in and even if your session time out has happened let's say if your session times out then you would see that whenever you type in the url again or refresh the page you would be sent to the login page and you have to log in and create the session and you would need to come in so that's the magic of spring security let's discuss a lot more about spring security in the next step in this step what we want to do is a we want to remove the hard coding of username these two things we have already done in the previous step removing login service and renaming login controller to welcome controller that's good and the last thing which we would add in is the logout functionality so let's start with the get logged in username function so what we have is a concept called principal principal is basically the user who is logged in so whoever user has logged in with a user id password is called the principal in usually the security systems and what we want to do is we want to get his username so we want to get his username and his username is in 28 minutes and that's what we would be using as the logged in username so that we would be getting that particular guys to do details so this would ensure that we are not hard coding the username but we are actually picking up from the login name so let's go ahead and use this function i'll go into our to do controller where we are hard coding it in so let's go ahead and do that in here this is where we have the retrieve logged in username function so what i'm going to use is in the retrieve logged in username function what i would need to first get is the principal so i would want to get the principal that's done using security context holder security context holder is one of the important classes in string security we would be using that so i'll do a control one import and we are doing a get context and we are getting the authenticated user and his principal so that's basically what we are getting in here next 
we want to get his username and that's basically what we are doing in the next step so we would want to get his username and return this out as well actually this is not a lot of complex logic so i copied in most of this stuff so now you'd see that from now on we are eliminating the entire hack coding so we would be using the real logged in user and we would be getting all this stuff for him so that's perfect and the other thing which we wanted to do is to add the logout functionality so we wanted to add in the logout functionality for which we would want to add in a login link so what i'll do is i'll add in a login link sorry a logout link so let's go ahead and add a logout link this will not be the class we'll change the class a little later so we would want to be able to log out right? and i'll give a url to this let's say slash logout a hello physical slash logout is logout so for now how does it appear a logout comes in here not really well formatted right let's try and format it first what we'll do is similar to this we would create a ul so ul i'll close this out here and this is something called navbar right we'll use that navbar right would light right align the logout so let's see how this looks now the logout is on the rightmost corner that's good if we didn't have this then it would appear right next to it i don't want that so i want the logout button to the rightmost corner that's good and let's add the navbar nav class as well how does this look okay now this looks much better so we have the logout button on the right side home to do's the logout button will not work because we have not added a controller to handle that let's quickly add that in so what we would want to do is now in the logout we would want to kill the session of the user if there is one and also terminate the authentication stuff so what i'll do is copy the welcome controller call it logout controller logout controller it's okay go ahead please do it and i would want to give it a url slash logout and i would leave it a get and i'll call this it's not show sure logout page actually it's logout and once the user logged out i would want to redirect him to the home page so i'll say redirect to slash that's basically the home page so redirecting him to the home page that's what we are doing in here so he will be sent back to the home page but in here actually we would need to terminate the authentication that he has so we need to terminate the authentication that he already has created he has logged in so there is an authentication thing that is created in spring security we will need to terminate that the way we would do that is very simple we'll again get the authentication so we'll get the security holder dot get context dot authentication and we'd first check if it's null if it's not null then what we would do is we will do a logout of this and to be able to do a logout we would need a request and the response objects as well so what we'll do here is we'll now add in the request and the response objects so we'll add in http servlet request request and http servlet response response that's it so i have added it in and now what we are doing is if there is a security context which is already there so there is a security context already there then terminate that with the logout so this is how you do that with spring security in spring security we are logging out that particular thing completely actually if you would want to be really really safe you can also do request dot get session dot invalidate this would create this would kill any session that is present so in here you can also terminate the session so that all the data in this session is also deleted in our application we have not put anything in the session we actually initially put name in the session but now we are getting name from the security authentication context itself so we don't need to have anything in the session and that's a very good practice not to have anything in the session but in real world applications sometimes you need to put something in the session and in that cases you need to invalidate the session when you are logging out so that's basically the functionality of logout completely implemented let's go to the page and going to list to do it's already logged in so it's going in there so now i click logout i'm going back to the login page now let's try different things so list to do what would happen login so or i would type in just this login so anything that you would want to do you have to first log in and only then spring security would allow me in 
and dummy login uh -huh, that's good so now i click to do's i'll be able to manage the to do's once i log out there's no way i would be able to get in unless i'm passed in by spring security so all the to do urls are blocked if i try to do something like list to do's i'll be blocked after i logged out i'll be asked buddy enter your name and password enter your authentication credentials and only then you would be able to log into the application we have the basic authentication using spring mvc setup that's very good until the next step bye bye if you loved this video then i'm sure you'd love our course on spring mvc step by step on udemy too you should find a link to it along with the discount code in the description course would take you over setting up an application with spring mvc step by step in about 27 easy steps so all the code that we have is on the github repository and the code would take you through all the steps and explain you all the tips and tricks that you need to be able to use to develop an application using spring mvc good luck see you in the course